Hello, my name is Nick, and welcome to this uh, short video on recording a 12 lead ECG. The first thing to point out here is that although it's called a 12 lead ECG, there are in fact only 10 physical leads to put on, so don't go looking for two more. There are four limb leads and six chest leads. So, why do we call it a 12 lead? Well, through the powers of witchcraft and physics, we ignore one of our physical leads, which is just an earth lead, and create three extra virtual leads by combining information from three other leads. Confirm that you have the correct patient, explain to the patient what you want to do and what you need them to do, and gain their consent. You may also need a chaperone. As always, don't forget to wash your hands at the point of care, patient care. Ask your patient to undress from the waist upwards, including bra if necessary. Socks and tights should be rolled down or removed so that you can get at the lower legs. The patient should be positioned where possible flat or in a semi-recumbent position and comfortable. They should remain covered whilst you enter the patient's demographics into the ECG. Unusually for a medical procedure, we should do an ECG from the patient's left side where possible so that we don't have to lean over the patient. Check that the machine is set up correctly. The paper speed should be 25 millimeters per second and the gain at 10 millimeters per millivolt and the filter at 150 hertz for a standard ECG. Next, you need to find your landmarks and place your electrodes. Start with the limb leads, one sticker for each limb. Debate exists as to where exactly you should put these electrodes and whether it should be over bone or muscle, so no matter what I say here, someone will disagree with a plausible explanation of why. I personally tend to go with the inside of the forearm over a bony prominence to limit the amount of muscle interference. However, if the patient is tremulous, then I would move more proximally to limit the amount of interference caused by the tremor. For the lower limbs, I just tend to use the medial aspect of the lower half of the tibia. Next, place your six chest leads, V1 to 6. If the patient is particularly hairy, you may need to consider shaving patches of hair so that the electrodes can come into contact with the skin. V1 goes on the fourth intercostal space on the right sternal edge. V2 goes on the fourth intercostal space on the left sternal edge. V4, yes I know I've missed out V3 but bear with me, goes on the fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line. V3 then goes directly between V2 and V4. V6 goes in the mid axillary line in the same horizontal plane as V4. V5 goes halfway between V4 and V6. In ladies, the leads should go under the breasts rather than over them. Connect the leads to the ECG electrodes. The leads should be clearly marked. R for the right upper limb, L for the left upper limb, F for the right lower limb, N for the left lower limb. Then V1 to 6, sometimes C1 to 6, for the chest leads. Ask the patient to relax and breathe normally and not to move around. Check that you have a clear recording on the screen for all your leads and then press the ECG record button. All machines will vary a little so make sure you're familiar with the one you're using. Check the quality of the printout and then if you're happy disconnect the leads from the patient. If you're not happy then repeat the recording until you are. I always give the patient the option to remove their own stickers from their body to avoid waxing them. So there we have it, the basis of recording an ECG. Next you need to learn how to read one. Make sure you go to a practical workshop and learn all the intricacies of recording the ECG that can't be covered in five minutes. Thank you for listening. ...and beginning the procedure, you should wash your hands. Put on an apron and gloves if necessary. Ensure that the area where the procedure is to be undertaken is clean and safe and the necessary equipment is available. It is important to ensure you have identified the correct patient. Confirm the patient's identification verbally by asking them to tell you their name, date of birth and the first line of their address. If you're performing an inpatient ECG, then also check the patient's wristband to verify their patient identification number. Cross-check the patient's details with the request form. Check whether the patient requires a chaperone or interpreter to support them. Before commencing the test, briefly explain the procedure to the patient and gain informed consent verbally. 
You are now ready to prepare the items you'll be using. Place the ECG machine on the patient's left side. First, check that there is sufficient recording paper in the ECG machine, then turn it on. Check there is enough battery power and that the correct settings are selected. The paper speed at 25 mm per second, the sensitivity or gain at 10 mm per millivolt, and the frequency response or filter at 150 Hz. Enter the patient details into the ECG machine. If the ECG machine does not allow you to enter the patient details into it, then you must write the patient's details on the trace when it's printed. Remove the disposable electrode tabs from their packet and place them on the ECG trolley, along with an abrasive preparation pad, the alcohol-based cleansing wipe and a razor if required. While you're preparing the equipment, ask the patient to remove their clothing to expose their chest and arms. Ensure that socks or tights are rolled down or removed to gain access to the ankles. Once you've prepared your equipment and your patient has undressed, ask the patient to lie on the examination couch or bed. This should be flat with one pillow. You are now ready to begin the procedure. Identify the site of attachments for the electrodes accurately and at these sites prepare the skin. This is required to ensure good contact and therefore produce an artifact free and accurate ECG trace. If required use a razor to remove hair. Dispose of the razor in a sharp spin. Using the abrasive preparation pad lightly exfoliate the skin surface. Using the alcohol-based cleansing wipe, clean the skin over the exfoliated sites and dispose of the wipe in a clinical waste bin. Once the skin has been prepared, attach the electrodes and leads. Incorrect placement of the electrodes produces diagnostically significant differences on the ECG and as a result patients can be treated incorrectly. Ensure the centre of the electrode is located in the appropriate position. First, attach the electrodes for the limb leads. There are four limb leads. The electrodes are located one on each of the limbs as follows. On the lower limbs, attach an electrode proximal to each ankle. And on the upper limbs, attach an electrode proximal to each wrist. Now move on to attach the electrodes for the chest leads. There are six chest leads. To locate the positions for these, use the sternal angle as a reference point to count down the intercostal spaces. The second intercostal space is directly below sternal angle and from here you can count down to the third, fourth and fifth intercostal spaces. The electrodes are located across the chest wall as follows. For lead 1, labelled V1 or C1, the electrode is located at the fourth intercostal space at the right sternal edge. For lead 2, labelled V2 or C2, the electrode is located at the fourth intercostal space at the left sternal edge. For lead 4, labelled V4 or C4, the electrode is located at the fifth intercostal space at the mid-clavicular line. For lead 3, labelled V3 or C3, the electrode is located midway between V2 and V4. For lead 5, labelled V5 or C5, the electrode is located to the left anterior axillary line on the same horizontal plane as V4. For lead 6, labelled V6 or C6, the electrode is located at the left mid-axillary line 
on the same horizontal plane as V4 and V5. In women, the electrode should be placed underneath rather than on top of any breast tissue. Once the electrodes are in place, connect the lead clips to them. You should ensure that the leads are correctly connected to the corresponding electrode tabs. The leads are clearly labelled to enable this. Attach the limb leads to the electrodes as follows. On the right lower leg, place a black lead. On the left lower leg, place a green lead. On the right forearm, place a red lead. And on the left forearm, place a yellow lead. Now move on to attach the chest leads to the corresponding electrodes, C1 to C6, from the patient's right to left. Now the leads are attached, you're ready to take the ECG recording. At this point, if you have a female patient, you may wish to cover the chest to help maintain the patient's dignity while you proceed with the recording, ensuring not to disturb the lead attachments. Ask your patient to be completely relaxed and breathe normally. When you are ready to record, double check your settings and check the screen to make sure that all of the leads are connected and producing a satisfactory tracing. Press the record button to record a 12 lead ECG. Check the recording on the screen and if this appears to be adequate, proceed to print. Once the ECG is printed out, check again to ensure the trace is artifact free and that no extra recordings need to be performed. The printout should show an ECG signal, followed by another ECG signal, which is the same. Assess whether any special circumstances are present which may require additional recordings to be undertaken, such as paediatrics, patients with known dextrocardia, and patients with posterior myocardial infarction. If necessary, record these measurements. Now the procedure is complete, allow the patient to redress, clean and clear away equipment, storing it appropriately. Remove your gloves and apron if worn and clean your hands. Finally, document on the ECG trace as required. The patient details, along with the time and date of recording, may have automatically been printed depending on the ECG machine settings. If it has not, add this now. Also, make a note of any change to the position of the leads, the position of the patient, or to the settings. Document the procedure in the patient's notes and inform relevant personnel that the test has been completed so that the results can be analysed. I hope that this film has given you an insight into the procedure of recording a 12-lead ECG. Please remember that this film has been produced as a guide in order to demonstrate the principles behind this procedure and must always be used in conjunction with your own classroom training and local guidelines.